Next, we're finally getting around to visiting a railroad roundhouse. And basic training unites a local group with a common passion. Then Curious Seabus asks, what about Amtrak? Support for Columbus Neighborhoods is provided by... At American Electric Power, we've been proud sponsors of WOSU Public Media for many years and strong supporters of our headquarter city here in Columbus, both downtown and in neighborhoods like yours. State Auto Insurance Companies, transforming to become a digital provider of auto, home, and business insurance and for nearly 100 years, committed to the people and neighborhoods of Central Ohio. State Auto. The Columbus Foundation. Smart philanthropy for a smart city. ColumbusFoundation.org. Bailey Cavalieri. Your relationship with your law firm doesn't need to be complicated. It just needs to be right. CODA. Keeps our community moving forward. Falgren Moortime Marketing and Communications. Think wider. Ohio Health focuses on you and your family with a mission to improve the health of our communities. Women in Philanthropy at Ohio State, changing lives by giving together. And by contributions from these and other Columbus area families who support WOSU. Thank you. You know, people really get on board when we do a show about local railroads. These episodes are among the most popular episodes we produce. That's why we're making a road trip to Sugar Creek, Ohio with architectural historian Jeff Darby to see the Age of Steam Roundhouse. It's a one-of-a-kind tribute to what many consider to be the golden age of American railroads. We're near uh, Sugar Creek up in northeastern Ohio, up in Amish country, and we're visiting the Age of Steam Roundhouse. A lot of people don't know about this, but it's a brand new complex built to preserve, work on, to operate steam engines. Built by a former railroader who's since passed away, but he's left it in very good hands. There hasn't been a facility in operation like this for 50 years, taking care of steam engines, and I am really looking forward to seeing this. Day. That's better. Tim, hello. Hey, Jeff, how are you doing? Good to see you. How are yeah, you? Good seeing you too. Well, yes. Thanks so much for having us up today. What a great experience this is going to be. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm hey, glad you made it up. For well, it's a new historic roundhouse, right? Uh, yes, sir, it is. Yes. And this is this is the office where they kind of run things? Uh, correct. Yeah. The mechanical headquarters is okay. right here. Kind of building the old manor with the beadboard <laughs> ceiling, beadboard walls. Yes, we tried to make it look like we step back in mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. if you notice the beadboard, the windows, Anywhere the lights, Anywhere from what, fixtures. 1910 to 1950? Yeah, that's a pretty, <laughs> pretty good. Pretty much what they were. Yeah, that's a pretty good Even era. the push button light switches, <laughs> right yeah. down to the last detail? That's correct, yeah. We, well, I know there's a lot to see, roundhouse and shops. Uh, I'm ready for a tour, you ready to show me? I'm ready if you're ready. Let's do it. And head this way, please. Okay. Quite a building. Oh. It is, thank you. Hello. Hi, guys. How Jeff, are you doing? I'd like you to meet John Corns. Hi, John. Hi. Jeff Darby. Yeah. Glad that you could join us here. Well, this is such a house. treat today to see this place. Uh, it's just, I've known about it. I've heard about it. It's just great. Well, it, it is one of a kind. So tell me about this. Now, this is a newly built newly roundhouse built. And, and steam maintenance facility. Yes, it is. Uh, done in the old manner. Is that right? That is correct. And tell me about the founder, uh, how it all came about. Jerry Jacobson loved steam locomotives. And he said, I always wanted to have my own locomotive, but I knew to own my own locomotive, I had to own my own railroad. Eventually had 10 railroads put together. Mm -hmm. When he sold those railroads in 2008, he used those proceeds from that to build this roundhouse. Well, and, and the roundhouse being the place where it's round, it's circular. Yes. It's where you store the engines when they're not being used. You yes, do light sir. repairs, is that mm -hmm. correct? How old was he when he was doing all of this? 
Well, he started uh, uh, loving trains, of course, when he was about 10 years old. Well, don't we all? <laughs> and then uh, bought his first locomotive uh, in the 1980s, and then just kept on buying them and kept on buying them. Jerry passed away, what, a year ago, you yes, said? Yes, sir. But uh, left everything in place that this would continue as a going venture. That was, that was his goal. And what we do here is have a little slice of life from the 1920s mm -hmm. and 1930s mm -hmm. of what the railroad would have done back in those days. So the engines, the locomotives, you'll keep in operating condition. Some of them. You, 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 can, you can exercise them a little bit on the track that you have. They won't necessarily yes. leave the property, but possibly. Oh, we, we were allowed to go out and... and run mm -hmm. on the on the other railroad that Jerry sold. Okay. So and do we've that. done that several times. Okay. And so, and so you can do excursions or at least exercise the engines, keep them That's lubricated. Right. That's Because they can't just sit. They need to run. They like need to car. stretch their wheels. Yeah, you can't, you can't oh, just yeah. let them sit. That's yeah. right. Well, I'd love to see the back shop where all the heavy work gets done. That's mm -hmm. just around the corner? Yes. That's uh, Tim's area. All right. He and his crew do all the work in there. Okay. And uh, let's go take a look at it. It's let's beautiful. All right, all right. Let's have a look. Sure. I think I know this engine from the um, Hocking Valley Scenic Railway, yep, wasn't it? Correct. Years and years ago. Yeah, came from the Lakes Pier in Ishpeming, but it spent quite a few years down there on the tour so line at the Hocking Valley. Michigan Upper Peninsula, right? Upper Peninsula, yeah. correct. Okay. So you pull engines apart here and you put them back together? Yes, this is our main heavy bay area. Mm -hmm. You know, with this engine, we've kind of got most of the heavy work done on it. Uh -huh. We're just tighten it and put it back together. We'll do a test fire on it, hopefully in the next month or oh, two. Oh, great. I know it was out of service for a long time, mm -hmm. but it stayed in good shape. It was under yeah. undercover, was it? Correct, yeah. We had it inside the roundhouse the whole time. And then our 2A2 sitting over there, we're doing a lot of boiler work in that one. 2A2 uh, meaning work. two leading wheels, mm -hmm. eight driving eight wheels, drivers. two trailing wheels, for people unfamiliar with how these yeah. things work, right? That's right. And their their name is, railroaders know them as Mikados. Right, okay. Yes. They, all had, they all had names, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and you've got to explain why there's a diesel here. <laughs> ah, well, diesels are historic as well. Well, they are, and, that's um, true. We've selected a few that are going to be part of the collection mm -hmm. because we're representing the transition from yep. steam to diesel. Well, that so we're a... actually getting this one sandblasted and do some body work, and we'll get it repainted now, to per its 1953 it, so look. So it'll be in the original railroad that it served. It'll be in those, that color scheme. That's correct, okay. yeah. Yeah, okay. we're going to do it that way. Well, it's been great seeing this uh, roundhouse and back shop. John, I wanted to ask, though, are you open to the public at all? Yes, we are. We schedule tours for people on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. And those are all guided tours. Those they don't, are all they, guided they don't tours. Go, can't go off by their own. And they get online to your website, is that correct? Yes. Age of Steam Roundhouse? Age of Steam Roundhouse dot com. Dot com. Okay. Well, thanks so much. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Good to wonderful, see you. Thank wonderful you for coming to, see to visit. You. And Tim, these are wonderful engines. They're not really moving. They aren't making any noise. But I thought I saw something with steam coming out of it. Okay, you did. Uh, is it possible to have a look and maybe, maybe even get a ride? Yeah, I think we can arrange that. Sounds good to me. Okay. Let's give it a try. All right, let's head Have out. Have fun and be Bye. safe. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Hey, John. Just watch it slippy getting up. Yeah, and you always step over the rail. Oh, yeah, you step over the rail, but yeah, yeah, go ahead. Let All you right. go first. Okay. And I'll follow you up. Oh boy, yeah, you can feel you can feel that coal fire, can't you? <laughs> yeah, mainly on this, this be the engineer side here. You've got the brake valve for the train. Right. This is for the locomotive. Uh huh. And then back here, the power reverse quadrant. Yeah. You grab that right now. We're kind of neutral position, if you want to think of it that way. Full forward to go forward. Uh huh. And then as you pick up speed, be like a gear shift in a car. Okay. You hook it up. Okay. Hence the term hooking up. Yeah. And uh, that'll allow different steam admission in the that's cylinders the, the to keep the momentum going. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And then once again, all the way to the reverse, we have the same functions in reverse, okay. you know. And so where did this come from? This started its life on the Southern Railway. We understand it ran in Indiana most of its oh, life. Really? Okay. And then in 1952, around that era, the Southern Railway sold it to a broker. The broker immediately sold it to a little short line in Kentucky called the Moorhead and North Fork. Was that like a coal hauling road? Uh, both coal and lumber. Oh, okay. And there was some stone involved too. Okay. But by the early 60s, it had shrunk down to only about three miles of railroad. 
mainly hauling lumber in and out. The coal was gone, the stone pretty well petered out. Were they still using the steam engine at that time? Up until about 62 or 63 really? was the last right, time they yeah. used it, but they'd also had picked up diesels. Okay. So the diesels ran through the 60s into the maybe early 70s. Mm -hmm. Their only connection was with the CSX Railroad mm -hmm. up in the little town of Moorhead. Right. And when the CSX abandoned the line and tore it out, they lost all rail connections, so they shut down. Okay. And their diesels got scrapped, but the family was a family operation, um, liked the engine because it was belonged in the family all these years, sure. so they hung on to it. Yeah. And then finally they decided it was time for it to move to a better place because the little engine house was starting to fall in disrepair and they didn't want to put money into the engine house. Even as a rail fan, I know something about trains, but you, you taught me a lot about steam engines today, so I think I understand how it works, but we can take a ride, right? Oh, I think we can arrange something All right, like that, that sounds good yeah. to me. So what happens well, next? Well, we'll make sure the fireman's ready to go. Right. Nick, are you uh, got enough coal and stuff? All right. Next, basic training unites a local group with a common passion. Then Curious Seabus asks, what about Amtrak? Sociologists call them third places, those locations other than home or work where we gather. And there's concern that Americans don't meet at churches, clubs, and bowling alleys like we used to. Instead, we're becoming more isolated. Third places can be very informal. There doesn't have to be a building or structure for people to gather in. In fact, we found that an unremarkable length of railroad track can attract people of many backgrounds. There's eight or nine spots just here in Columbus that rail fans and photographers will hang out just to see what goes by. And a lot of us will post what we shoot, you know, on a couple of local pages that are devoted to trains running through Columbus. It's fun. We all have varying degrees of talent with a camera, and some of us just show up just to watch, like David. He loves to just watch one pass. You know, it's not about shooting pictures, it's about enjoying the sight of something that's so big and massive rolling by. The first time I was up here and I met David and his mom, one of the locomotives came by and they saw him and they gave him an extra, you know, shaving a haircut, toot on the horn. And having been a kid, 10, 12 years old, and standing by the tracks and watching an engineer wave at you. That's one of the biggest thrills in the world. On this rusty old rail car With graffiti on the side Roll through every broke down the stockyard Just to win my life's long haul ride You've been coming out here a long time. I've been coming out here since 1974 as they were building the Cook Road underpass. There is a strong community, eclectic. You see young parents with little children, you see older people. People come up to take pictures, people come up just to hang out. I think the common denominator, everybody has an interest and or love of trains. So it's really a social thing? In many ways, yes. There's a lot of different conversations from politics to weather. Much of it's centered around trains, model trains. When I was a kid, my grandfather on the east side of Pittsburgh used to go up street at night, and that's what he called it, and sit and talk with the old men. And I guess I've reached that point. Been 
coming out for here for about four years. And the pictures of the containers and the cars are pretty good. I would say the pictures of the double stack, that's a really good picture. Brandon, what got you interested in this in the first place? Well, my dad always had Lionel trains in the basement, and my grandpa was always big into photography. So eventually, the two interests and hobbies combined, and it turned into this. I might go out in the rain or a little bit of snow, shoot some pictures every now and then, but I've seen pictures of yours that are like 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, and it's dark, and you're in some part of town that nobody wants to go to. What drives you to go after the photos you get? I always want the photos to be different because like you said, nobody's going to want to go to that part of town at 3 a.m. to get a picture. In order to create a different scene, different lighting. What are the things that you have to consider when you're trying to set up for that NS freight that's coming across the Scioto River? I like to include elements in the environment and showing where the train is in the picture. Something that people can identify with Columbus, like a bridge or a building, for example, the Levesque Tower. One of the main things is the lighting in the scene, or if the lighting isn't cooperating, an interesting train. Something from a different railroad, like a railroad from out west, something that doesn't typically run through this area. What is probably your favorite photo in, in terms of what you had to go through to get it exactly how you wanted it. It was on the west side of Columbus where when I'd arrived at the scene it was pouring with rain but then the sun began to come out and the train was getting closer and as the train maybe a quarter mile away a, a rainbow appeared over top of it. Made the picture completely different, not what I expected. One of the craziest experiences that I had while photographing trains and just photographing the landscape was in Eastern New Mexico and West Texas, where me and two other friends got caught up in a lightning storm. And we'd gotten ahead of it, so we pulled over and got our cameras out, basically in a lightning storm to get some really interesting pictures. We were all running on adrenaline, and it was worth it. Every now and then, something unusual shows up. The summer before last, a rail museum down in uh, Carolina hosted a gathering of the remaining streamlined locomotives. But there was about a half a dozen of them that came up through here. On a normal night, you might see one person out here. On that day, there were like dozens. There it is. Come on, we gotta get across. There's a light on. There it is. Going down there, going down there. What's the most trains you saw in one day, David? Oh my gosh, is it like six? Yeah, you've never been to Mary, right? No, but I've heard it's really great for train watching. Yes. When did you folks start coming out here? Gosh, it's probably been 10 years now. A friend of ours is also a rail fan and was telling us different locations like Bellevue and Marion and here. Have you ever been to Fostoria? No, I haven't. What's in Fostoria? It's a train park. Oh, really? Yeah, it's an iron triangle. But they build a platform there with heated bathrooms and... <laughs> nice. Here it comes. I think it's a double stack also. I don't think it's double stack. I don't think it is. Coltrane. Yes. That's 
pretty cute of Norman and Ian sitting there. <laughs> Have you always been excited about trains? Yes! Even when you were a little boy? Yeah! What's so exciting about them? I just love them! David learned so much from watching train movies. He could teach me about the engines and the two four, the arrangement of the wheels and everything. Yeah! I was watching you guys while you're waiting for trains. You've got a lot of time to talk and just hang yeah. out together, don't you? Yep. A lot of That's time to visit. Cool. Yeah. A lot of the conversation is, I hope there will be another train. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard the expression, that train has left the station. It's an expression you could easily use talking about Amtrak in Columbus. Curious Sea Bus tells us why that train is long gone. Curious Sea Bus is WOSU's project where you submit your questions about our region, its people, or its history, and we assign a reporter or producer to investigate it. Today's question is from Megan Steva. She asks, why is Columbus the largest metropolitan area in the country without Amtrak service? And when did we lose rail service in the first place? First, a little history. Rail service began in Columbus in the 1850s. In 1897, construction of the majestic Union Station was completed, and for the next 80 years, travelers were served by several railroads. Amtrak took over the Pennsylvania Railroad route, known as the Spirit of St. Louis, in 1971 and later renamed it the National Limited. That line ran through New York, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Columbus, Dayton, Indianapolis, St. Louis, and Kansas City. But by that point, ridership was on the decline and decaying tracks led to frequent delays in service. Then, in October of 1976, a large section of the arcade at Union Station was demolished. The station continued to serve rail passengers for a time, but that was really the beginning of the end. Finally, due to federal budget cuts and a lack of profitability, Amtrak discontinued the National Limited in 1979. Columbus hasn't had a passenger rail since. Now as to the question of why Columbus still doesn't have passenger service 40 years later, it seems to be a matter of public support and political will. A decade ago, there was a big push to bring passenger rail back to Columbus with the so-called 3C Corridor. The plan would have connected Cincinnati, Columbus, and Cleveland. Democratic Governor Ted Strickland pushed for the new line, and 400 million federal dollars were allocated for the project. But in the 2010 election, Ohioans voted in Republican John Kasich. He killed the plan over concerns that the line would be too expensive and wouldn't draw enough riders. Those 400 million transportation dollars were sent to other states. Though that plan failed, two new plans to bring high-speed travel to town are currently being considered. One is an Amtrak high-speed train line between Chicago and Columbus with stops in Indiana and Ohio. The other more futuristic idea is for a Hyperloop, a new form of transport where pods carrying freight or passengers travel on magnetic tracks inside a vacuum-sealed tube. The Hyperloop could potentially reach speeds exceeding 500 miles per hour. In 2017, Columbus was named a finalist in a global search for possible locations. A proposed route from Pittsburgh to Chicago through Columbus is currently being studied. So though you won't be able to buy a ticket anytime soon, there is hope for Central Ohioans who want to ride the rails again. Do you have a question for Curious Seabus? Head over to wosu.org slash curious to submit your idea, vote on which question we should investigate next, and see what we've covered so far. Thanks for being with us, and remember you can catch all our episodes on columbusneighborhoods.org, plus see our stories on the WOSU mobile app, and you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
We'll see you back here next week on Columbus Neighborhoods. Way down in Columbus, Georgia. Lord, I wish I was back in Tennessee. Way down in that old Columbus docky. Lord, my friends, they have turned their backs on me. Go away and leave me if you wish to. Never let me cross your mind. Well, in your heart. Support for Columbus Neighborhoods is provided by... At American Electric Power, we've been proud sponsors of WOSU Public Media for many years and strong supporters of our headquarters city here in Columbus, both downtown and in neighborhoods like yours. State Auto Insurance Companies, transforming to become a digital provider of auto, home, and business insurance. And for nearly 100 years, committed to the people and neighborhoods of Central Ohio. State Auto. The Columbus Foundation. Smart philanthropy for a smart city. ColumbusFoundation.org. Bailey Cavalieri. Your relationship with your law firm doesn't need to be complicated. It just needs to be right. CODA. Keeps our community moving forward. Falgren Moortime Marketing and Communications. Think wider. Ohio Health focuses on you and your family with a mission to improve the health of our communities. Women in Philanthropy at Ohio State. Changing lives by giving together. And by contributions from these and other Columbus area families who support WOSU. Thank you.